dear students and my colleagues and my audience, international as well as national. Today this uh, short video is about part 4 of the poem Reflection by Taufik Rafat. Three parts have already been separately recorded and here is part 4 of the same poem, Reflections. Reflections is a poem which talks about poetic process and the difficulties which possibly can come in the way of the poet and what are the inspirations of the poet and what are the powers and strengths which would help him in the face of difficulties. So part four in this regard continues. It says, I sit in my garden and listen to its overtones. Here the red arsed bulbuls come to inject a dumb tree with life. Now that's a natural phenomena which the poet talks in the beginning. He says that he is sitting in his garden and is listening to different type of voices which are coming from the garden. He is listening not only to the voices which come from the trees and plants but also from the birds. One of the bird is red arsed bulbul which has come and sits on the tree which was already voiceless but as soon as the the birds sat in it, they started to chirp and as a result, a lot of voices started to come from the tree and the tree became full of life. So that's why the poet is using the term tree with life. A dumb tree is injected with life. So in that way, life changes, life comes, life goes and it creates a type of inspiration for the poet. The poet says that when he looks at this tree that becomes beautiful, enlivened and very much attractive because of the presence of the bulbuls. No, the red arse bulbuls, the ejective which has been used red arse before bulbuls, that's very interesting because the, there are many nightingales bulbuls but one of the particular bulbul is having red arse and that is why a particular kind of image is created by using this, this ejective before the bulbuls. Moreover, the word bulbul it reflects the Pakistaniness of the poet, indigenousness of the poet, and that is the quality of all post-colonial literatures that one or two examples or indications would be there that literature has been created by someone who is not English, not, not the uh, person belonging to the community of the English people, so not writing English literature but literature in English and that is why this type of wording has been used. So here the first uh, four lines of the part four go to suggest that the things can be enlivened, can become full of life once different colors of life enter into it. Let's take more examples in order to prove this point. The poet says, for the beginning while the love of learning is a new love, we need to improvise, adore, use external objects to provide reasons for the existence of things. The poet says that the start of life all the time is happy with the happy of happiness of learning that one wants to run one wants to know what is that while one is doing this at that time not only efforts are to be made but also some kind of decoration of these efforts are also to be made and for this purpose some of the external objects are also needed they are required in order to see how the existence the existence of things is going on so poet says that in order to know everything in order to continue with everything one needs to have a specific knowledge love for that knowledge and learning as well and in order to nourish that knowledge to become a perfect person that is also needed so not only inspiration is needed from nature but also some kind of technicalities that is the use of words appropriate words knowledge skill and information all these things are also required to start writing poetry so not only inspiration from nature should come but inspiration from one's capabilities should also come come in order to write down poetry so after saying these two things, the poet turns again to the image, he says, the flashing of a kingfisher's wings against a brooding tree triggers a new chain of thought. He gives the example that when these two things are happening, alongside that, another thing possibly happens that a kingfisher is there, it, this is flying in the air and because of this flight, his wings are open and they are looking like fire, like uh, something shining, he says that. Uh, when you look at another side of the of the sky or that of the scene, you can find a tree there which is a brooding tree, small tree which is bending downwards, which is not feeling a good type of thing in the tree. But if you look at the kingfisher, you can in contrast to this tree see that kingfisher is very attractive. And when you look at that, at that time, a chain of thought begins in your mind, it triggers in your mind something like that. So it means that if dull and boring things are happening but all of a sudden something shining happens it can also kick start the process of writing down of poetry that is why the poet uses the image of kingfisher along with the 
image, which is a contrasting image of the brooding tree. He says, even if the tree is brooding, the image of Kingfisher can make it liven in the same way as the past uh, lines we read that the tree which was silent started to become full of life because of the presence of some bulbul. And the same thing he continues to talk about the trees. For example, here he brings a particular type of tree. He says, impossible then to see how the laburnum follows its own seasons and swings its lamps outside our reckoning. He gives the example of uh, one tree which is known as laburnum. According to the poet, this tree creates different types of flowers and these flowers are just like lamps. He says its flowers are swinging in the air and outside that everybody sees that it, it is got to do these things. I mean creation of these lamps that means the flowers on this tree. It is the job of nature. The nature would continue to do that but as soon as one is able to look at the laburnum tree with its lamps which are swinging one feels very happy. One has to recognize what is going on. One has to say that this thing is again very beautiful and that is another source of inspiration for the poet. So, so far three things have been talked about. One tree with bulbuls, another tree in contrast to the flight of kingfisher and then laburnum tree. In all these things one thing is quite common that is the color, that is the brightness, that is the shineness which causes inspiration in the mind of the poet. So, let's see what further the poet continues to say. He says, it's been consecrated to love from its crowned or barren self, bowed under hail or bland in the sun, but the same tree still will be extracted, whatever we need of history or logic. The poet says that uh, when you go back into your history, you can find number of trees which were the source of happiness for some time and then ultimately they became less a source of happiness after some time. He says that if you look at such trees, you can see that there are some trees who get the crowned head of the things or, or themselves and some are there who would be just like barren but both of these uh, both of both of these heads both, both of type of these trees have to go down or bow down before the hail and the same thing happens with the sun that sun also becomes bland because of the hail because of the storm which comes comes there and as a result the situation change the shininess disappears but then the tree remains still the same and that is why the poet says, whatever the situation may be, we need to see what was in history and what is the logic of creating poetry. In history also, nature and its beauty was there, man and its, its beauty was there, and that beauty was compelling everyone to, to be inspired. Same as the case now, that after inspiration, logically, it's a kind of idea that one should start writing poetry. So, the poetic process has double-edged sword. One is that, one edge is that, that the poetic process can be inspired because of any beauty. But the same beauty may be, uh, may, may be distracted, may be extracted, may be removed from one place to the other and that is why the inspiration should end. No, it's not the case. In both ways, the history, the logic and everything like that goes to prove that beauty may exist in one form or the other. The job of the poet is to discover that beauty and send the same beauty and the sentiment of beauty to his readers. So that is why whatever the inspiration can be through some of the symbols the poet is trying to highlight and making us understand what is really the source of inspiration and how that source of inspiration can be exploited for creation of beautiful poetry or how it can be ignored and the result will be no literature, no poetry at all. So here we uh, stop for this day because the part 4 is complete, a part 5 will be discussed in some next short video. So far, uh, thank you for watching this and hope to see you in some uh, next video. Uh, till that time, it is time to say goodbye and thank you for watching.